Welcome back to the channel. Today, I got my hands on something super cool. This is the brand new PlayStation 5, courtesy of our friends over at PlayStation Canada. And today, we're gonna jump in, do our PS5 unboxing. We're also gonna showcase some brand new PlayStation 5 gameplay. And as well, the guys over at PlayStation Canada also hooked me up with this. This is the brand new PlayStation Pulse 3D headset. We will jump into this as well today. Also, coming up very, very soon here on the channel is gonna be our continuation of our Dirt 5 career mode on the PS5. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe. Anyways though, for those of you who don't know, the PlayStation 5 is available now, providing you live in North America, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. However, if you're in Europe, in the UK, for example, the PS5 only comes out next week on November 19th. Luckily for me, I live in Canada, so today we get to unbox this thing. I'm super excited. Without further ado, let's not waste any time. Slice the thing open and let's get into our PS5 unboxing. We can't do that again. This is a bit of a big boy as well. It barely fits in the frame. We're actually gonna tip it onto its side and pull it out like that. There you go. We can get rid of this box now. After we take that first box off, the PS5 is actually in this very white, plain, boring looking box. So let's open up this one as well and jump into this unboxing. I'm really excited to showcase this. Oh. Showcase this controller, look at that. Right away when you open the box, you've got your controller right on the top. We will come back to this. This controller is very, very special and I seriously cannot wait to jump in. After that, you've got your power cord with no power brick. After that, if we open up this side along here, we've got our HDMI cable and this is the stand for the PS5. Again, we will come back to that. And then last but not least, this is our charging cable for our controller. Again, we will come back to all of that stuff. I do want to jump into the console right away, which is just packaged in this like styrofoam stuff. And again, we can get rid of the box. If we take off all of the cardboard stuff, we are left with the PS5. And am I going to get lucky? Is it the correct? No, it's upside down. Why do I keep unboxing everything upside down? I, I, I guess we're just going to put the thing onto its side and go from there. And there it is. This is our brand new PlayStation 5. Jeez. In its full Stormtrooper look, take a look at that thing. It is so sick. And, and honestly, based off first impressions, it's not actually as big as you think it would be. I've heard so many people go and complain about how massive the thing is. I don't know if that brought my expectations like up for how big it would be, but it's not as huge as I thought. Anyways, let's talk about what's going on with the console itself. So, this is the full PS5. There is also a digital version without this disk drive on the front. Both of the consoles, this version and the digital version, both will play the exact same games, both have the exact same horsepower. One just comes with a disk drive and the other one doesn't. That's the only difference. Anyways, this PS5 comes with 825 gigs of onboard storage and after you take into account all of the operating system and everything like that, you're left with around 650 gigabytes of usable storage, which is okay, but I honestly would have loved to have seen some more. When you think of games like Call of Duty, for example, which are over 200 gigabytes now, that leaves you only room for a couple of games on this thing, which is a little bit disappointing, but for the PS5, you can actually open it up and install another drive into the thing. Unfortunately though, at the time of recording this video, there's no Sony approved internal hard drives for the PS5. So if you want extra storage for this thing, you're gonna have to plug in a USB hard drive into the thing, which doesn't always look the best, especially when your console is looking like this. 
I don't really like to plug USBs into the thing. In terms of ports for this thing, we've got our disk drive, obviously, like I was saying. We've got a USB port on the front here. That's gonna be used to charge your controllers. Down below that, you've got a USB-C port. That's where they recommend you plug in external hard drives to get some extra storage on board. Also, a super small little detail that I actually love about this thing that I don't know if a lot of people actually know this. On the inside of these fins for the console, it says Sony on this side here, but you can see a little bit of a texture in there. Those textures are the X button, the triangle, the circle, the square. Super small attention to detail, but I love things like that. Anyways, if we spin the PS5 around, this side's super, super clean. We do have a little bit of a bulge. You can see where that disk drive is. Obviously, you won't get that if you're using the digital version. Off to the rear. The majority of the rear of the PlayStation 5 is actually vents to allow as much heat to come out of this thing as possible. That's the same thing with the front. It allows air into it and then shoots it out the back out of all of these vents. In terms of ports for this thing, we've got two USB 3.0 drives. Again, you can use that to plug in hard drives or anything that you want. You've got an ethernet port to download those massive games as fast as possible. That's what I'm going to be using. Then you've got an HDMI out port. And finally, you've got your power plug all the way down at the bottom. And that is it. No messing about with extra stuff. And honestly, that was one of my complaints with the Xbox Series X and again is going to be one of my complaints with this thing. I'm one of those people who used optical audio and neither of these consoles offer it. Sure, it may be a thing from the past, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who have awesome home cinemas set up and are going to need to find some new methods of getting audio from the consoles. On the bottom of the console, there's actually even more vents on the thing. So what you're going to want to do with that is actually use this base that they provide with you. Basically, the way this works is you can have it sitting upright and you just click your console in and have it sitting sort of kind of like that. It makes it a lot more stable and allows air to get in through the bottom. However, you can also take this base and actually turn this little foot and allow the console to sit on its side. And then all you have to do is take the console, make sure if you've got the disk drive version, the disk drive is on the bottom, that's the correct orientation. And then it actually just clips in and you can make this console super stable, not gonna move. It's got some nice little rubberized grip here on the bottom, so you don't have to worry about your console moving around. Anyways, after that, let's jump into the thing I am most excited for. This is the brand new PlayStation 5 controller. Honestly, one of my least favorite parts of the PlayStation 4 was how small and how lightweight and almost cheap feeling the controller felt. This thing is completely different. Right off the bat, it is bigger. Fits my hands way better than the PlayStation 4 controller did. Now without weighing the controllers as well, this thing has some serious weight behind it, which is a good thing for me. Right in the middle of the controller, right around here, feels way more solid than the PS4 controller did. And that's probably because of all of the upgrades that the PlayStation 5 controller has. For example, this thing has haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. We will jump into our almost review when we jump into that Dirt 5 video coming in a few days. So make sure you subscribe for that, like I said. And I mean, hey, if you're a fan of the PS4 controller, I think you're gonna really like this. This is just a natural progression of the PS4 controller with some pretty significant improvements. It's gonna be interesting to see how the internal battery on the controller holds up, not just for its initial couple of charges, but when you're getting into year one, year two, and so on of using the controller, are those batteries gonna slowly start to fade and almost make the controllers unusable in a couple of years? We will have to see. I never had a problem with my PS4 controller, but it's always something to consider when you can't actually swap out the batteries yourself. Anyways though, moving along from that thing, like I said, you've got your power for the console, which is just this normal power cord. Same thing you're used to from previous generations. I love having no power brick. That that's awesome. You've also got this standard HDMI cable, again, keeping it nice and clean and simple. Final wire in the box is this. This is your USB to USB-C port for charging your controller that you're going to plug in here to the front of your console. And after that, that's it for the PS5 unboxing. Why don't we jump into this thing as well, our headset? I'll be honest, straight out of the gate, I don't actually know if I'm going to use this because this only works on the PS4 and PS5. 
I don't actually use parties on my consoles anymore. I just use Discord. Inside of this thing, you've got this. This is another USB to USB-C port, I would imagine, for charging the headset. After that, you've got this. This is your USB for Bluetooth to allow you to pair your headset. And then finally, after that, you've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Awesome. I, I don't know. What do you What do you guys think? Do, do they look Do they look pretty cool? I I I feel like they actually look pretty good. Sony claims you can actually get 12 hours of battery life from the headphones, which is actually pretty good. We'll have to see if that actually holds true in practice. They've got noise canceling, which is awesome. I don't know how many people are gonna use this thing. Let me know in the comments down below if this is something you'd be interested in, though. And with that, that is our PlayStation 5 unboxing featuring the brand new PlayStation 5 controller. I seriously cannot wait to jump in, see how those haptic feedback and the triggers feel while actually playing some games. Subscribe if you want to see that. That is going to be coming at you guys super soon. Thank you so much to PlayStation Canada for hooking me up with the PlayStation 5 to feature here on the channel. I cannot wait to jump into the gameplay. Like I said, subscribe if you want to see that. Be on the lookout. I'll see you guys then. Bye!